Buddhism in the West broadly encompasses the knowledge and practice of Buddhism outside Asia in Europe, the Americas, Australia and New Zealand. Occasional intersections between Western civilization and the Buddhist world have been occurring for thousands of years. With the rise of European colonization of Buddhist countries in Asia during the 19th century detailed knowledge of Buddhism became available to large numbers of people in the West, as a result of accompanying scholarly endeavors. Hellenistic world Ancient history The Western and Buddhist worlds have occasionally intersected since the distant past. It was possible that the earliest encounter was in 334 BCE, early in the history of Buddhism, when Alexander the Great conquered most of Central Asia. The Seleucids and successive kingdoms established Hellenistic influence in the area, interacting with Buddhism introduced from India, producing Greco-Buddhism. The Mauryan Emperor Asoka BCE converted to Buddhism after his bloody conquest of the territory of Kalinga modern Orissa in eastern India during the Kalinga War. Regretting the horrors brought about by the conflict, the emperor decided to renounce violence. He propagated the faith by building stupas and pillars urging, amongst other things, respect of all animal life and enjoining people to follow the Dharma. Perhaps the finest example of these is the great stupa of Sanchi in India. This stupa was constructed in the 3rd century BCE and later enlarged. Its carved gates, called Tauran, are considered among the finest examples of Buddhist art in India. He also built roads, hospitals, universities and irrigation systems around the country. He treated his subjects as equals regardless of their religion, politics or caste. This period marks the first spread of Buddhism beyond India to other countries. According to the plates and pillars left by Asoka the Edicts of Asoka, emissaries were sent to various countries in order to spread Buddhism, as far south as Sri Lanka and as far west as the Greek kingdoms, in particular the neighboring Greco-Bactrian kingdom, and possibly even farther to the Mediterranean. In the Christian era, Buddhist ideas periodically filtered into Europe via the Middle East. Stories of the Christian saints Barlam and Husafat were Christianized renditions of the life of Siddhartha Gautama, as translated from Indian sources into Persian to Arabic to Greek versions, the religious language being only cosmetically altered along the way. The first direct recorded encounter between European Christians and Buddhists was in 1253 when the King of France sent William of Rubruck as an ambassador to the court of the Mongol Empire. Later, in the 17th century, Mongols practicing Tibetan Buddhism established Kalmykia, the only Buddhist nation in Europe, at the eastern edge of the continent. <laughs> Greco-Buddhism The Hellenistic influence in the area, furthered by Seleucids and the successive Greco-Bactrian and Indo-Greek kingdoms, interacted with Buddhism, as exemplified by the emergence of Greco-Buddhist art, especially within the Gandhara civilization which covered a large part of modern-day northern Pakistan and eastern Afghanistan Greek sculptors in the classical tradition came to teach their skills to Indian sculptors resulting in the distinctive style of Greco-Buddhist art or Gandhara art in stone and stucco in hundreds of Buddhist monasteries which are still being discovered and excavated in this region. Greco-Buddhism is the cultural merging between the cultures of Hellenism and Buddhism, which developed over a period of close to eight centuries in Central Asia between the 4th century BCE and the 5th century CE. <inaudible> <inaudible> Buddhism and the Roman world Several instances of interaction between Buddhism and the Roman Empire are documented by classical and early Christian writers. Roman historical accounts describe an embassy sent by the Indian king Pandian Pandya, also named Porus, to Augustus around 13 CE. The embassy was traveling with a diplomatic letter in Greek, and one of its members—called Zarmanochegas, was an Indian religious man Sramana, who burned himself alive in Athens to demonstrate his faith. The event created a sensation and was described by Nicolaus of Damascus, who met the embassy at Antioch, and related by Strabo 15, 1, 73, and Dio Cassius. A tomb was made for Zarmanochegas, still visible in the time of Plutarch, which bore the following inscription, Zarmanochegas Indas Apo Bargozas. Zarmanochegas from Baragaza in India. 
These accounts at least indicate that Indian religious men sramanas, to which the Buddhists belonged, as opposed to Hindu brahmanas were visiting Mediterranean countries. However, the term sramana is a general term for Indian religious man in Jainism, Buddhism, and Ahivika. It is not clear which religious tradition the man belonged to in this case. 19th century During the 19th century, Buddhism along with other non-European religions and philosophies came to the attention of Western intellectuals through the work of Christian missionaries, scholars, and imperial civil servants who wrote about the countries in which they worked. In English, Sir Edwin Arnold's book-length poem The Light of Asia 1879, A Life of the Buddha, became a bestseller and has remained continuously in print since it first appeared. Topic. Philosophical interest These included the German philosopher Schopenhauer, who first read about Buddhism and other Asian religions at an early stage before he devised his philosophical system. The American philosopher Henry David Thoreau translated a Buddhist sutra from French into English. There are frequent comparisons between Buddhism and the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, who praised Buddhism in his 1895 work The Antichrist, calling it, "...a hundred times more realistic than Christianity." Robert Morrison believes that there is "...a deep resonance between them," as "...both emphasize the centrality of humans in a godless cosmos and neither looks to any external being or power for their respective solutions to the problem of existence." Topic. Popular interest In the latter half of the 19th century, Buddhism came to the attention of a wider Western public, such as through the writings of Lafcadio Hearn. The late 19th century also saw the first known modern Western conversions to Buddhism, including leading theosophists Henry Steele Alcott and Helena Blavatsky in 1880 in Sri Lanka. Beachcombers such as the Irish ex-hobo U. Damaloka around 1884 and intellectuals such as Bhikkhu Asoka H. Gordon Douglas, Ananda Metya and Nyanataloka at the start of the 20th century. 20th century Immigrant Buddhists and teachers Immigrant monks soon began teaching to Western audiences, as well. The first Buddhists to arrive in the United States were Chinese. Hired as cheap labor for the railroads and other expanding industries, they established temples in their settlements along the rail lines. At about the same time, immigrants from Japan began to arrive as laborers on Hawaiian plantations and Central California farms. In 1899, they established the Buddhist missions of North America, later renamed the Buddhist Churches of America. In 1893 Soyan Shaku was one of four priests and two laymen, representing Rinzai Zen, Jodo Shinshu, Nichiren, Tendai, and Shingen, composing the Japanese delegation that participated in the World Parliament of Religions in Chicago organized by John Henry Barrows and Paul Karras. In 1897, D. T. Suzuki came to the USA to work and study with Paul Karras, professor of philosophy. D. T. Suzuki was the single most important person in popularizing Zen in the West. His thoughts and works were influenced by Western occultism, such as Theosophy and Swedenborgianism. By his works Suzuki contributed to the emergence of Buddhist modernism, a syncretistic form of Buddhism which blends Asian Buddhism with Western transcendentalism. Pre-World War II popular interest The first Buddhist temple in Europe, named Das Buddhistische Haus, was founded by Paul Dalk in 1924 in Berlin. Dalk had studied Buddhism in Sri Lanka prior to World War I. The first English translation of the Tibetan Book of the Dead was published in 1927 and the reprint of 1935 carried a commentary from Carl Jung. The book is said to have attracted many Westerners to Tibetan Buddhism. Also published in English in 1927, Alexandra David Nails. My Journey to Lhasa helped popularize the modern perception of Tibet and Tibetan Buddhism at large. Western spiritual seekers were attracted to what they saw as the exotic and mystical tone of the Asian traditions, and created esoteric societies such as the Theosophical Society of H.P. Blavatsky. 
The Buddhist Society, London was founded by Theosophist Christmas Humphreys in 1924. At first Western Buddhology was hampered by poor translations often translations of translations, but soon Western scholars such as Max Muller began to learn Asian languages and translate Asian texts. During the 20th century the German writer Hermann Hesse showed great interest in Eastern religions, writing a book entitled Siddhartha. 1950s American Beat Generation writer Jack Kerouac became a well-known literary Buddhist, for his Romana Clef the Dharma Bums and other works. Also influential was Alan Watts, who wrote several books on Zen and Buddhism. The steady influx of refugees from Tibet in the 1960s and from Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia in the 1970s led to renewed interest in Buddhism, and the countercultural movements of the 1960s proved fertile ground for its westward diffusion. Buddhism supposedly promised a more methodical path to happiness than Christianity and a way out of the perceived spiritual bankruptcy and complexity of Western life. Topic: <laughs> Emerging mainstream Western Buddhism. After the Second World War, a mainstream Western Buddhism emerged. In 1959, a Japanese teacher, Shunryu Suzuki, arrived in San Francisco. At the time of Suzuki's arrival, Zen had become a hot topic amongst some groups in the United States, especially beatniks. Suzuki Roshi's classes were filled with those wanting to learn more about Buddhism, and the presence of a Zen master inspired the students. In 1965, Philip Kaplow traveled to Rochester, New York with the permission of his teacher, Hakun Yasutani to form the Rochester Zen Center. At this time, there were few if any American citizens that had trained in Japan with ordained Buddhist teachers. Kaplow had spent 13 years 1952 to 1965 and over 20 sessions before being allowed to come back and open his own center. During his time in Japan after World War II, Kaplow wrote his seminal work The Three Pillars of Zen. In 1965, monks from Sri Lanka established the Washington Buddhist Vihara in Washington, D.C., the first Theravada monastic community in the United States. The Vihara was quite accessible to English speakers, and Vipassana meditation was part of its activities. However, the direct influence of the Vipassana movement would not reach the U.S. until a group of Americans returned there in the early 1970s after studying with Vipassana masters in Asia. In the 1970s, interest in Tibetan Buddhism grew dramatically. This was fueled in part by the Shangri-La view of this country and also because Western media agencies are largely sympathetic with the Tibetan cause. All four of the main Tibetan Buddhist schools became well known. Tibetan lamas such as the Karmapa Rangjing Rigpa Dorje, Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche, Geshe Wangyal, Geshe Lundub Sopa, Dezung Rinpoche, Sirmi Kensor Lob Sang Tharchan, Tarthang Tulku, Lama Yeshe, Tubtan Zopa Rinpoche and Geshe Kelsang Gyatso all established teaching centers in the West from the 1970s. In 1982 Thich Nhat Hanh founded Plum Village in Dordogne, France which, along with his hundreds of publications, has helped spread interest in engaged Buddhism and Vietnamese theme Zen. Perhaps the most widely visible Buddhist teacher in the West is the much-traveled Tenzin Gyatso, the current Dalai Lama, who first visited the United States in 1979. As the exiled political leader of Tibet, he is now a popular cause celebre in the West. His early life was depicted in glowing terms in Hollywood films such as Kundan and Seven Years in Tibet. He has attracted celebrity religious followers such as Richard Gere and Adam Yauk. In addition to this a number of Americans who had served in the Korean or Vietnam War stayed out in Asia for a period, seeking to understand both the horror they had witnessed and its context. A few of these were eventually ordained as monks in both the Mahayana and Theravadan tradition, and upon returning home became influential meditation teachers establishing such centers as the Insight Meditation Society in America, such as Bill Porter. Another contributing factor in the flowering of Buddhist thought in the West was the popularity of Zen amongst the counterculture poets and activists of the 1960s, due to the writings of Alan Watts, D. T. Suzuki and Philip Kaplow. <laughs> Western Buddhism today Today, Buddhism is practiced by increasing numbers of people in the Americas, Europe and Oceania. 
Buddhism has become the fastest growing religion in Australia and some other Western nations. There is a general distinction between Buddhism brought to the West by Asian immigrants, which may be Mahayana, Theravada, or a traditional East Asian mix, and Buddhism as practiced by converts, which is often Zen, Pure Land, Vipassana, or Tibetan Buddhism. Some Western Buddhists are actually non-denominational and accept teachings from a variety of different sects, which is far less frequent in Asia. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Tibetan Buddhism. Tibetan Buddhism in the West has remained largely traditional, keeping all the doctrine, ritual, faith, devotion, etc. An example of a large Buddhist group established in the West is the foundation for the preservation of the Mahayana tradition FPMT. FPMT is a network of Buddhist centers focusing on the Gelug lineage of Tibetan Buddhism, founded in 1975 by Lamas Tubten Yeshe and Tubten Zopa Rinpoche, who began teaching Buddhism to Western students in Nepal. The FPMT has grown to encompass more than 142 teaching centers in 32 countries. Like many Tibetan Buddhist groups, the FPMT does not have members per se, or elections, but is managed by a self perpetuating board of trustees chosen by its spiritual director, head Lama, Lama Zopa Rinpoche. <inaudible> <inaudible> Buddhist modernism A feature of Buddhism in the West today is the emergence of other groups which, even though they draw on traditional Buddhism, are in fact an attempt at creating a new style of Buddhist practice. Controversial Lama Chogyam Trungpa, the founder of the Shambhala meditation movement, claimed in his teachings that his intention was to strip the ethnic baggage away from traditional methods of working with the mind and to deliver the essence of those teachings to his Western students. Chogyam Trungpa also founded Naropa University in Boulder, Colorado in 1974. Trungpa's movement has also found particular success in the Canadian province of Nova Scotia, Shambhala International being based out of Halifax. An associated monastery Gampo Abbey was also built near the community of Pleasant Bay. Other significant groups with a modernist approach are the Triratna Buddhist Community formerly the Friends of the Western Buddhist Order, which was founded by Sangharakshita in 1967, and the Diamond Way Organization of Ol Nidal, who has founded more than 600 Buddhist centers across the world. <laughs> Charismatic authority A number of groups and individuals have been implicated in scandals. Sandra Bell has analyzed the scandals at Varadatu and the San Francisco Zen Center and concluded that these kinds of scandals are "...most likely to occur in organizations that are in transition between the pure forms of charismatic authority that brought them into being and more rational, corporate forms of organization." Robert Scharf also mentions charisma from which institutional power is derived, and the need to balance charismatic authority with institutional authority. Elaborate analyses of these scandals are made by Stuart Lax, who mentions the uncritical acceptance of religious narratives, such as lineages and dharma transmission, which aid in giving uncritical charismatic powers to teachers and leaders. <laughs> Popular culture Buddhist imagery is increasingly appropriated by modern pop culture and also for commercial use. For example, the Dalai Lama's image was used in a campaign celebrating leadership by Apple Computer. Similarly, Tibetan monasteries have been used as backdrops to perfume advertisements in magazines. Hollywood movies such as Kundan, Little Buddha, and Seven Years in Tibet have had considerable commercial success. Buddhist practitioners in the West are catered for by a minor industry providing such items as charm boxes, meditation cushions, and ritual implements. Temples The largest Buddhist temple in the Southern Hemisphere is the Nan Tien Temple translated as Southern Paradise Temple, situated at Wollongong, Australia, while the largest Buddhist temple in the Western Hemisphere is the Shi Lai Temple translated as Coming West Temple in Hacienda Heights, California, USA. 
Both are operated by the Fo Guang Shan Order, founded in Taiwan, and around 2003 the Grand Master, Venerable Sing Yun, asked for Nan Tian Temple and Buddhist practice there to be operated by native Australian citizens within about 30 years. The largest monastery in the USA is the City of 10,000 Buddhas near Ukiah, California. This monastery was founded by Ven. Suan Hua who purchased the property. Dharma Realm Buddhist Association purchased the city of 10,000 Buddhas in 1974 and established its headquarters there. The city currently comprises approximately 700 acres of land. See also References Sources Topic. Further reading Prebish, Charles S., Bowman, Martin, eds. 2002. Westward Dharma, Buddhism Beyond Asia, Berkeley, University of California Press Clausen, Christopher, Victorian Buddhism and the Origins of Comparative Religion, Religion, Journal of Religion and Religions, v. Spring 1975, 1-15. Fields, Rick 1992, How the Swans Came to the Lake, A Narrative History of Buddhism in America. Shambhala. Hakias, G.T. The Self-Immolation of Kalanos and Other Luminous Encounters Among Greeks and Indian Buddhists in the Hellenistic World. JOCBS, 2015 8, pp. 163-186. Hakias, Georgios. When the Greeks converted the Buddha, asymmetrical transfers of knowledge in Indo-Greek cultures. In religions and trade, religious formation, transformation and cross-cultural exchange between East and West, ed. Volker Rabins. Leiden, Brill, 2013-65-115. Numeric, Paul 2003. Two Buddhisms Further Considered, Contemporary Buddhism 4 1, 55-78, Yolanov M. S., Badmave V. N. 2015. Buddhist World in Global Context. International Journal of Economics and Financial Issues, 2015. 5. Special Issue. pp. 15-17. 3. Topic. External links. Buddhism in the West by J. Garfield Tibetan Buddhism in the West, Is It Working Here? Buddhism in Europe Annotated Bibliography by Martin Bowman Retrieved August 13, 2013